It's 10 to 9, 20 minutes later than planned, but Tom Wyatt of Exeter YMCA is finally in the studio. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Dan. It's great to be here. We've got to stop meeting like this because this is the third time you've appeared on my show, more than any other guest. Well, it's, it's always a privilege to be on. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's always wonderful, no matter what time you turn up. <laughs> so, uh, you are here to talk about the Exeter YMCA Sleep Easy, which, if you were listening to the programme 12 months ago, if you're that loyal a listener, is the first time you were on. So, That's right. For those who weren't listening last year, what's it all about? Sure, well, we as Exeter YMCA are a local charity who house homeless young people. Um, and so the idea is to raise awareness, to raise sponsorship. Hundreds of people gather together in the Guildhall Shopping Centre to spend a night sleeping under the stars um, with the catch line of sleeping rough so that others don't have to. So that's the basic idea, people sleeping out for a night, um, getting a small, small experience of some of the challenges that homeless people face, um, raising money in the process so that we as XYMCA um, can continue to provide support and housing to homeless young people. It's fantastic. I mean, for people who aren't familiar with the work that Exeter YMCA do, I mean, is homelessness that big of a problem in the city of Exeter? Because it's one of those issues that we instinctively think, well, that's not a big thing in our city. Can you give us an idea of the scale of the problem you're dealing with? Sure. Well, I mean, nationally, um, youth homelessness, it's estimated that about one in a hundred young people face um, homelessness throughout a year. Mm -hmm. So, as you can imagine, that's, that's... a surprisingly high statistic if you think of 100 people that's maybe one um, school year um, at least well maybe maybe even more than that um, is facing homelessness at any time uh, Exeter and Devon surprisingly high um, in, in terms of youth homelessness and homelessness I, I think it's around um, sixth highest in the country right. outside of London which is surprisingly high for, for an area like Devon and um, I guess I guess the thing that's, that's most difficult is obviously there's rough sleeping which is a terrible reality of of people who are sleeping on the streets there's a lot of hidden homelessness that is difficult to even measure um so that's that's young people who are sofa surfing um young people who are going from house to house friend to friend um a night at a time or they may be staying in a b&b or or something like that and it's very difficult to quantify that but um in terms of the people who we're getting in at x y m c a it seems like it's quite a significant issue and have you seen a rise in numbers over recent years? Certainly with um, kind of the current economic climate, um, we are seeing a lot more homeless young people, yeah, and, and some of the care and support um, that has previously been offered no longer there, so our services do seem to be more and more needed. Okay. Um, the other thing that um, kind of comes up, particularly when people, particularly with homelessness, but generally when anyone gives to charity, the question that they always ask, and you'll have heard this a hundred times because you're their fundraising officer, where exactly is my money going? So give people an idea of, you know, presumably it's not all going on admin to organise next year's sleeping. It's, it's certainly not all going on admin. Um, we strive to keep all our admin um, and publicity costs at an absolute minimum um, to ensure that you know everything that's that's going to charity um, goes to the, the work we're doing. So um, as people fundraise for X to YMCA, obviously just providing a home, providing a roof for our young people um, is a primary thing. Um, bricks, mortar, electricity, all those things. But it also goes towards support costs. So um, we we don't want to just give the homeless young people a home um, and then. A year later, two years later, when they move out, they're, they're back in the same situation. We want to equip them with life skills so they can go on to live an independent life. So they get a one-to-one support worker who chats through issues in their life, puts together a, um, a budget, a plan, um, that sort of thing. We've also got cookery courses, um, music groups, job clubs, all the things that they're going to need to go on to live independently, live a healthy, flourishing life. Um, and so that's that's what people who take part in Sleep Easy are going to be help, helping fundraise, both a home for these guys, um, but key support um, to, to see them live a, a flourishing life beyond the next YMCA. Excellent. Well, let's um, talk about the event itself. Um, first of all, ballpark figure, how much exactly are you looking to raise this year? Sure. Um, I seem to remember you asked me the same question last year. and, and Well, it's, I'll it's give, a valid I'll point. I'll give an equally vague answer. That <laughs> it is always difficult for us, for us to... Um, to guess because you just don't know um, how much people will fundraise but last year we raised £30,000 which is an incredible sum of money 
Our aim ultimately is is to outdo last year to raise over thirty thousand um, pounds. That that would just be incredible. That that to give you a bit of an idea, that would maybe equal ten young people getting support for a whole year. Um, so a huge huge deal that that, that means for us. So we'd love to beat thirty thousand pounds. That's that's what we're aiming okay, for. That's not so. Bad. <laughs> if anything, that's more precise than last time. Um, so let's talk about the actual event itself. Uh, where is it taking place? And if we sign up as you've goaded me to (laughs) well goaded you gently persuaded what can we expect from the evening if we get involved sure so um, it's happening at the Guildhall Shopping Centre in Exeter um, on 15th of March that's Saturday um, on to the Sunday morning in terms of what to expect, we've got live entertainment, so two local bands, um, one called Mammoth, um, they're a great funk band, um, the other is called India Electric Company, they're quite a new band, um, acoustic, folky, great, great sound. Um, we've also got some Exeter University drama students who are going to be doing performances through the evening, so we're really excited about that. Um, and there'll also be our, our own residents there, sharing their stories, um, even some of them doing performances, and I think most people find that as kind of one of the most poignant moments of, of seeing these young people who society's often written off, actually hearing their stories, seeing them perform, seeing their potential, um, that, that's an amazing thing. So that's kind of some what's in store, as well as just being part of Exeter's biggest sleep out, mm. um, is, is a great element of it, and, yeah. and just the um, challenge and excitement of sleeping out for a night, um, yeah, it's, it's what you can expect. And we should state that even though it's YMCA, which is Young Men's Christian Association, it, the event doesn't necessarily have a religious slant to it. <laughs> So certainly people shouldn't not. be put off by that if that's not yeah, their cup of tea. Yeah, certainly not. It's, it's absolutely open to everyone, um, anyone, any age. Last year, our youngest person was 14. Our eldest person, I think, was 78 who's taking part. Uh, we've got business people doing it, local councillors. Um, journalists. Oh, journalists, all sorts of people, radio presenters like yourself, yes. Dan. <laughs> um, yeah, everyone. So absolutely, um, it's something which... which in itself is amazing the the variety of people who it brings together around this cause mm. and i understand you're looking for volunteers to actually help with the running of the night such as the setting up and the taking down in the mornings yep yep so if if people want to take part and and volunteer then then we really really appreciate that there's a few different roles um that people can do as you say setting up setting down some stewarding through the evening nothing at all particularly difficult um but just some things that help the evening run a bit smoother if you if you do volunteer then there's no registration fee so there is a little bit of incentive to, to volunteer um, so it'd be great if anyone listening wants to get involved in that way as well we'd really appreciate that okay well you've sold it to us really well so <laughs> give us the uh, give us all the details about how, where we need to go to register sure. and what it involves sure. and what it costs and yeah. all the rest of it yeah so the the main thing is get online to the website www.sleepeasyexeter.org.uk um, that's where you can find out all the information um, and register uh, there's there is a registration fee of ten pounds uh, for over eighteen year olds and seven pounds for um, under eighteen year olds and um, yeah it'd be great to get on board fifteenth of March uh, at the Guildhall Shopping Centre really appreciate that if people want to get on board excellent and what's your personal t- I mean presumably you're being sponsored as well I I um, haven't given that any thought yet I've been so busy <laughs> uh, planning it myself I'll have to get back to you on that one <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's that's the vague answer. <laughs> that's, there's the vague answer. You got at least one this morning. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, we have reached our vagueness quota for the year. <laughs> Tom, thank you very much for coming so in. Much, and well, I'll see you at the sleepies, but also see you next year. All being well. <laughs>